Welcome to the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. My name is Coach Scott. I'll be your host today. It is Wednesday, Wednesday morning, about 1130. Uh, I am late with this podcast. I've been trying to figure out how to do it and I just, I feel like I, I feel like it's just not living up to my own expectations. It just feels, seems really boring to me. Listen to myself talk when I, when I record it and I listen back, I'm like, I am not entertained. I want to get to the entertaining parts though, because I think there was some entertaining parts. We're going to focus on those and really it surrounds uh, the Marine Corps Marathon this weekend because it, what a great weekend. What a great weekend. I think that's part of my problem is I'm trying to live up to the actual, to the fun that we had this weekend by, by encapsulating it in the podcast and it hasn't been working for me. So let's try it. Let's try it this time. Uh, just a little roll call from the weekend. Uh, Saturday, a couple 5Ks. We had Stephanie Brown doing the Ghostly Gecko 5K in Melbourne, Florida. The Booze and Brews 5K in Cortland, New York. Charlie Duffy. Um, Charlie Duffy, his, his goal approaching these, he had, he's running a bunch of 5Ks. His goal was to run sub-19, which is fast. And I think he ran closer to 18 this past weekend. In fact, he, he won the overall race. He got some nice little swag there. Uh, congratulations, Charlie. That is just awesome. Charlie is the first ever Team Ordinary member to win an overall race. That is awesome. Congratulations, Charlie. Sarah Bauman in Ironman Waco 70.3 finished that race. Uh, congratulations, Sarah. Great job down there. Um, Steph and I were talking about this, and I think I'm going to mention it this time. I don't know what I'm going to do going forward, but uh, we talked about Scott Frassard running Iron, Iron Man Waco 70.3. He took a bunch of pictures of himself. He definitely talked about it on on Facebook, so I'm not going to shy away from it. So the policy is, what do you do uh, on a podcast if someone DNFs? Because Scott, unfortunately, DNFed on Sunday in Waco. And I think the answer to that is, it depends. I think a guy like Scott, he's obviously, he's done a full Ironman before. He's got nothing to prove to anybody. He's been posting about his race on Facebook. Uh, we're going to acknowledge his effort. We're going to acknowledge that he showed up at the start line. And sometimes when you're not really prepared, showing up at the start line is courageous in and of itself. Um, he had a little bit of a problem with asthma in the swim and he just took himself out. So I, I can't say I blame him for his finish. Um, for DNFing, pulling himself out, that's fine. Uh, I, I know he's going to pick himself up. And I tell you, we have not heard the last from Scott Frassard. So I'm going to mention on the po on the podcast, going forward, the policy on DNFs, um, don't really have one. It's, it's, it depends. It depends if I'll announce it or not. And uh, that's it. So let's talk about Marine Corps Marathon, guys. You, you can tell. I, I By the way, I shaved my beard uh, when I got home. Uh, if you guys are watching the YouTube channel, you can see. Um I just, I couldn't live up. I met a bunch of guys out there that were just sported the beards way better than me. I, I couldn't, I couldn't compete. Ron Booz, uh, Chad Sandberg, um, Denny Cray, I saw out there. You guys, you guys keep your beards. You're doing a good job. Me, I don't think it's for me. So if I start growing it again, uh, someone let me know, tap me on the shoulder. It's just not me. Just not me. Um, let's talk about Marine Corps Marathon. And I, you know, I wanted to talk about the race. Normally I'll tell you a whole story about how we got there. Um, and what we did, but really, the, the, there's one story in this race, right? There's one story, uh, and it's the weather. And the weather in the forecast had been, you know, showing rain for a good week, probably longer than that. I started looking about a week before. Now, I didn't run the race. If you guys remember, I I decided I couldn't run the race, so I I, I was still registered. Um, I was spending the time with my daughter, uh, Sam and Ellie my daughters, plural, Sam and Ellie. Uh, unfortunately, I made that decision beyond the date. This race is really cool in that it lets you does let you transfer your bib to somebody else and it does let you defer a year. So you can defer to next year. You got to pay, but you know, if the problem was, was I made this decision not to race it after that deadline. So I missed out. I certainly wasn't going to sell my bib after that and, and risk being uh, a subject of a marathon investigator blog post. I don't know. That wouldn't be good for business. But uh, yeah, I did go to the expo, pick up my stuff. But that was about, that's all my purchase. And yeah, I'm going to wear the shirt too. We can, we can argue about that if you want, but it doesn't say finisher on it. I paid the money. Uh, it's a really nice shirt. I tried to give it to my dad. He didn't want it. He's a Marine. He didn't want it. So I'm wearing it. It's just the way it is. Of course, I, I don't ever take off this shirt anyway. So maybe I won't wear it. I don't know. 
so anyway, the, the, the focus of the race really, I mean, the, the, the story of the race is the weather. You know, a lot of times you see the weather, uh, you see rain forecasts six, seven days in advance, and you're not even, you wouldn't even be worried because it's just silly. The forecast changes so often, but this one didn't. And as we got closer and closer, it seemed only to get worse. Um, and then the last day we got that hourly update on the weather. And of course, at 10 a.m., 11 a.m., it wasn't even just rain. It was lightning bolts in the for- forecast. And and that's the last thing you want. I mean, it. I really... I despise bad weather when I'm running. I, I hate training in it. I use the treadmill almost all the time. If it's drizzling out, I'll use the treadmill. And I get it. You should always train for rain. And you should, I get it. But man, we woke up in the morning and I walked you guys, I walked some of the runners to over to uh, to the start. We went to the Metro and uh, it was raining. It was, I would call it uncomfortable rain. It wasn't a driving rain, but it wasn't like a light drizzle either. It was just an uncomfortable rain, something that you don't want to definitely don't want to stand outside in and uh, and you don't even want to walk through. But I was just figuring, hey, I'll walk through it. I these guys are gonna run a marathon in this weather. I could at least walk them two blocks to the metro. So we did that. I said goodbye to you guys, and uh and you guys were off to the start. I went back to the hotel. Uh Ellie was still sleeping. We kind of let her sleep for a little while. Um and I just watched outside and it, the skies just opened up. It was pouring. And I just kept thinking about you guys at the starting line. And man, uh, you know, you're sitting there wearing your sneakers and they're all getting waterlogged and everything's getting heavy. And, you know, did you guys prepare for blisters? Because if you didn't, it could be a bad day. Blisters could be a really, really bad thing. Um, man, it was horrible weather. Horrible. I didn't want to go outside. I barely even want to cheer. We had to go walk a block in order to cheer you guys at mile one. And I didn't want to do that, but we did get up. I got the baby up. We got her fed and changed. And, uh, me and my father, Sam and Ellie, along with, uh, Kevin Kennedy, Aura's husband and, um, Chad Sandberg, Chantel's husband, we walked over to go spectate at the race. We we're probably there about 20 minutes before people started coming by about, my, I don't know, I think it was probably about a mile and a half or two miles into the race. We saw Ray Magania, Deb Early, uh, Katie Mayo, Stephanie, Aura, Chantel, you guys all ran by and it was good to see you. It was good to see, you know, as much as the weather really sucked and you guys were going up a hill at the time, uh, you're all in good spirits. Um, maybe, maybe not Debbie. Debbie had a little scowl on the face. I know, I don't know that she was happy to be there in that moment, but, um, we watched it go through. I got to tell you, just a, a, um, we have to talk about, we have to talk about one thing and it's, uh, I am very happy to see that the run walk interval uh, approach to, to running marathons is becoming ever more prevalent. I see it everywhere. And it's, you know, I think Stephanie and I ran this in 2015 and we did a, a walk run. Our intervals were pretty wide apart, far apart. Our walk intervals were wide, far apart. I think we like ran five minutes and then walked one or something like that. And there weren't a lot, we didn't run into a lot of other people doing this approach. You know, we were doing it to save ourselves to get through the gauntlets, which are the time, uh, time limits. You had to, you have certain time frames you have to, you have to hit, you have to get to a certain point before a cutoff. Um, and they pull you from the race. So we, we wanted to make sure we did that. So we took a run walk approach and, and it worked awesome. Since then, you know, my experience in Ironman, I think having that approach, having those inner, that walk interval approach saved my Ironman races. It, uh, it made the run portion much more manageable, much more efficient. And even my, my marathon PR, I, a significant portion of that race, I did run walk, uh, intervals. So and I'm glad to see it. I'm glad to see people taking advantage of it, especially early on in the race to save yourself for later. This is the problem that we run into is that in standing there and spectating and watching the race, there are a lot of you guys that a, you just stop, you run, 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 and then you just stop and walk as if there aren't a gazillion people running behind you, 30,000 people running behind you that are going to run you over and you frustrate people and you anger people. So let's just sit it right here, guys, move to the right. This is the proper protocol for stopping is move to your right, check behind you, raise your hand. If people are right behind you, let them know you got to stop. I'm I'm stopping Uh, and let them run around you. Try to let them run around you. And then it's just the way it's got to be guys. We can't uh, we can't do this and, and screw people up. On top of that, if you're doing if you're doing intervals from the beginning, seed yourself back, 
seed yourself back a little bit because there are people that don't do intervals. And, you know, we tend to think, oh, we have to accommodate everybody. Well, you gotta, you have to also be respectful of people who are just running. Um, yeah, we have to accommodate people who are going to stop for walk breaks. We all understand that. But you also have to be accommodative to the people who are trying to, to run. Um, you know, it, it, I, I, too many times I just saw, we were watching people stop for walk breaks, going up the hill. And then five minutes later, the four hour pass, uh, uh, pacer passed us. So you seated yourself ahead of the four hour pacer and you're doing walk intervals at mile two. Don't do that. Do not do that, guys. Come on. Uh, and it's just, you know, you know what races, you know, I, we just heard a lot of F-bombs being dropped and my kids are there. It's just like, come on, guys. Come on. Let's be a little respectful of everybody. Seed yourself properly when you start a marathon or any race like this. It's uh, it's it's really good to see that people are doing these run-walk intervals at the beginning of races because they do that. It makes the sport much, much more accessible to, to other people, to people who think they never could finish a marathon before. It's a wonderful thing. Um, but we can't forget that, you know, it used to be you just used to run these races. 95% of the people didn't do it a walk interval. So we're intruding on other people's sport here and it's great it's a wonderful thing but be respectful of how this stuff this stuff works and if you're doing interv- walk intervals at mile two and that's in the plan do not seed yourself ahead of the four hour pacer it shouldn't be that hard anyway i, I i'm gonna get off i'm gonna get off my uh my my little angry <laughs> my little ang- anger get through this anger patch <laughs> it just was frustrating to see so you know we saw you guys go by and, and the rain was pretty good it was coming down it wasn't pouring that badly but it was uncomfortable we had ponchos on it wasn't that uncomfortable to stand there and watch you guys but after you ran by the the two mile spot we were able to go just two blocks over and we could see you again come back at mile four right near our hotel and that was great and i didn't see debbie and i didn't see ray that time i did see katie i ran into uh denny cray who actually stopped while he was running and i'm like dude keep running and he stopped and he took a selfie we said hello uh introduced him to my dad and then he took off. Um, he, but he stayed with us for like a minute. It was uh, it was cool. I got by the way, I got a tons of footage from my GoPro of the race. I, I do have to download. I got to go through it, make sure that I didn't say anything stupid while <laughs> while it was recording. But I'm, I'm thinking about just downloading all of the footage so anyone who wants could could see if they're in there. Um, we did we we recorded quite a bit. Um, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I, you know, I didn't see some people. I didn't see Frank Fumick out there. I didn't see Ron Booz out there. I didn't see uh, Bill Costello out there. And after mile four, we, you know, we still had a plan to spectate for the rest of the day. Um, we went back to the hotel for a little bit. The next area that we were going to try to catch up with the runners was at mile 10 which meant we had to walk a little bit, cross a bridge, and go over and, and catch the route over there. And then we're going to walk over sort of like the National Mall, Washington Monument. And that was kind of like my whole reason for taking Sam with me was so that we could watch the race and then we could walk around and she could kind of see the sights of DC and and uh, and all that good stuff. It was a good plan. When we got back to the hotel room, uh, you know, I do have a plastic canopy for Ellie Stroller. But her feet stick out the bottom and her socks were soaking wet. So we had to change her, uh, change change her socks at least. Um, and we're looking forward to get out there at mile 10. But man, by that time, it was pouring. I mean, really coming down. Really, really bad rain. And it just was like that for at least an hour, probably two hours where I was uncomfortable bringing the baby outside. I know, you know, if it was just me and Sam, I probably would have done it. It probably would have been a fun daddy daughter thing, but having the baby, um, put the kibosh on that. So I missed out on going to see them at mile 10 and mile 17. And the, and the guys went, um, Kevin Kennedy and, uh, and Chad Sandberg went and they were giving me updates, which was really cool. And them, you know, telling me how Stephanie, Stephanie was doing. I'm not going to talk a lot about Stephanie's race because we're going to, we're going to have her on the podcast separately. And we're going to talk about that separately. Uh, but you guys out there, man, I I was just sitting there staring at this rain, watching this rain going, how in the world, some of you guys, I know you were, you you were thinking that you might be cutting the gauntlets very close and you might miss the cutoffs. Um, some of you that were doing your first race and you didn't know if you had 26.2 in you, I understand all that stuff, but then to look outside and see how hard it was raining. Some of you guys were going for PRs. You thought you were in shape enough to get a PR. And then geez, what happens when your sneakers weigh five pounds? 
How do you how do you PR a race? You're standing in the driving rain. The sneakers are, are weigh five pounds, and uh, and then somewhere probably around I don't know four or five hours into it, the rain stopped. But you guys didn't get a break. You didn't get a break either. As soon as the rain stopped, the clouds disappeared, and the sun was just brutal. Eighty degrees, eighty degrees in late October in in Washington D.C., which I don't think that's I don't think that's normal, but. Some of you guys, even after the race, I talked to you, you were like, oh, I just, I almost wished it didn't even stop raining. I would have rather had the rain. You guys ran through some puddles that were ankle deep. Um, this is just toughness. This, and all, all of the team ordinary people that we met who, who started the race, all you guys finished. Some of you impressively. Some of you very, I mean, Bill Costello, sub four hour marathon. You know, I never see Bill talking about training on our page. He kind of, he'll stick his head in there, say hello from time to time. Um, so I never really know how fast the guy is. And then he, he, he breaks four hours. By the way, he's wearing the, uh, the team ordinary shirt that I'm wearing minus the coach, but, um, what a great race, Bill sport. you know, I, I just, I almost wish that you were out there a little bit longer to, to show it, show the colors, um, you know, it's like, you don't even get your money's worth for the advertising, but awesome job. Way to, way to represent the team and get out there. Congratulations. Ron Booz, 50K, his first 50K. And I kind of think that he's uh, a little upset about the uh, his time. He wanted a little, but you can't, you know, on a day like this, you got to throw time out the window. Take the medal, put it on the shelf and just be happy. Be, uh, be just impressed with yourself that you got through it and you finished. My God. Um, you know, and I think a lot of people were just, they were probably upset at their time, but you know, you just enjoy it uh, because you did it. Debbie Early, Ray Magana, Katie Mayo, all of you guys. Uh, I think, you know, I think all, I talked to all of you. I don't think De- Debbie didn't really have a time goal. I know that Ray did. I know that Katie did. And I think that you guys needed a good day for that, for that to happen. And look, it's not, you know, it's not uh, it under those conditions. You know, I think, and no, no one was up. I don't think anyone is upset. It's just that you train really hard for one day and then you have to go up against that. It's like just another thing that you have to go up against. Um, and if you, and if it didn't happen, if there, you know, what's the, what, the, what do you think the chances are? It's going to rain 15%, 10%. I don't know. Uh, or at least rain like that, where it just destroys your race. So you just got to be proud of what you did. And enjoy that medal. Uh, Danielle Rose Valley, Mike Rose Valley, congratulations, both of you guys. I mean, you guys have done something incredible. Danielle uh, finished Montre Blanc. Uh, I think they both finished Berlin. They both, I think they both did Chicago. And now they both did Marine Corps Marathon. How insane is that? What kind of, what kind of race schedule is that? My God. Uh, Danielle also, I want to thank her. She submitted the very first guest blog for the teamordinary.com webpage. Check that out if you get a chance. She wrote about travel. She wrote about uh, it's Danny's guide to traveling while running. Uh, she would know. She's the authority. She, all the travel that she's done in the last few few weeks, incredible job. Chantel Sandberg, her first marathon. Uh, it was awesome to meet you. We've been talking on the page for a long, long time. Awesome to meet, meet, meet your husband. Uh I, you know, I, I don't want to say what he did, uh, but he's, let's just say, uh, thank you. I do, I do want to thank Chad, uh, super kind guy. What he did like this very kind thing, but I don't want to, I don't really want to talk about it. Cause I feel like Chad's the kind of guy that is like, he just likes to do kind things and nice things and doesn't like to brag about them. So let's just say Chad did something awesome for everybody. And, uh, it may have been picking up the tab for lunch, but, uh, <laughs> It was really cool, and I, I just I thank you, Chad, for doing that. Um, Katie Evers joined the joined the team. I didn't see her name in the finish. I didn't meet her, unfortunately. Uh, I didn't get a chance to talk to her. I didn't see her name in the fin- in the uh, in the results page either. So I don't know if something happened. Maybe she didn't start. Maybe she just chose not to start, which perf- would have been perfectly acceptable. Um, Aura Kennedy and Stephanie. Both of them, I've watched them. I mean, they started running. They started training maybe three months ago. Three months ago. And watching them train and work hard, probably those first two months was very inspiring. Very Maybe maybe they trained four months ago, and I think it was the first three months. They just 
not missing their run every day. What are we doing? Uh, well, we have to run. Well, I got to work. Uh, let's go at five in the morning. Let's run in the darkness. Let's run, let's run in the rain. Um, I was driving around dropping off water bottles for them as they trained. It was really, really inspiring. And they, they had a rough last month of it. And I think that got them both to sort of question whether or not they were going to be able to finish, which probably put a little more anxiety than needed to be. Uh, you got to see your training through, guys. But uh, you both finished, and I couldn't be prouder. I mean, that, that makes me two for two, by the way, as a coach. So, hey, all my athletes finish. All my athletes finish. I can say that for the time being. Uh, I do have another one next week. Joe Bartlett's going to be doing uh, New York City Marathon. Um, not worried about him finish. He's got that. He's got that. So I'm going to be three for three next week. Um, and really, I got you know, I cannot. I cannot stress the toughness it took for all of you guys to finish. And I can't stress how awesome it was to meet you all. Um, I told, I told Katie Mayo the other day, she's like, Oh, we had such a great time. Like we got, you know, they're already planning. They don't need, it's funny. Like I, I think we all kind of just, this was just, this just happened, right? Nobody, I, I don't think anyone really signed up for this race because everybody else was doing it. Just all these people are just racing this race this year. And, it was awesome. It was awesome that this happened. We all got together. We all had such a blast. And and you guys are out there now planning your next few races so that we can all go out and meet again. And I know that there's two on there's two already on the books. We're gonna talk about that in a second. Um you're not gonna want to miss out on this, guys. This was so much fun. And I, telling Katie Mayo, like, you know, there's not like there's not one person in the group where I'm like, oh, that person's coming along. And there's like 15 of us. So it's like <laughs> that's a good ratio, right? That's a good ratio. I mean, uh, you figure the ne- uh, the odds of that happening. Uh, and and I think it was Debbie that said, you know, we, we spend so much time on Facebook talking about training and helping each other and asking questions and, and inspiring each other uh, sort of unintentionally just through conversation and posting about your training. And then you go and meet each other. And it's the first time you've met some of these people, but you feel like you've known them forever. And it's, it's the truth that you feel like, you know, you feel like you're, you're like long lost buddies and, and who are meeting for the first time, but it's, it's, there's no sense of unfamiliarity. It's, it's, it's sort of strange in a way, but it's awesome in another way. And we just had a blast. Um, the two races that they have chosen, one is the Philly marathon. And I, I, I love the idea of the Philly marathon because the Philly has a half too. So if you're one of those people that are kind of like, I don't know if I can, run a full, I don't know if I, you know, if you just, oh, maybe I'll train for a half. Philly has a half. So that's going to be next year. That's, but that's not till like November of 2020. So then the topic came up. We got to do something in between because it's just too far away. And someone chose the Atlantic city half marathon. It's a rock and roll race. And I believe that's May 20th. It's May something. So that's another one. So if you guys are out there and you're like, man, I wish I would have been hanging out with those guys. They look like they had a blast. They have so much fun. Um, where can I meet you guys? That Those are the two races. So it's the Rock and Roll Half in Atlantic City in May. Make your plans now. We'll have more of like our hotel information and stuff like that. And then we're going to do Philly next year. And I haven't even done Philly this year. Um, so we're going to do some some uh, research on that. Make sure we get a good hotel, all that good stuff, and get everyone together And have a great time like we did this year. We need to recreate this. The success, you know what it is too, is just celebrating your successes. And I didn't even run the race, but celebrating your successes afterward and hearing your stories about your day and how you, how you guys persevered through all this bad weather and made it through was just so inspirational and so worth it. It was, uh, it was a great time. So thank you all you guys who showed up and, uh, and showed up at the race. Um, man, I just, you know, Sam and I, and, And the baby, Ellie, went up to the finish line to see Steph and it was just, it was too hot. We had to turn around and come back home. And then it turned out that we, you know, after, because we were so close to the finish line, we could go, go back. Uh, You know, just to, the two things I didn't like about this race, one was that the expo was way too far away from the start and finish lines. It was like a 45 minute drive. I don't even know, but, and and they kind of made it sound like it was easy to get there on the Metro and it wasn't. You took the the metro, then you had to get on a a shuttle bus. And the shuttle bus, we all sat in the bus for like 15. They wanted to fill the bus before they sent it. And the bus was like a 20-minute drive on the highway. It was annoying. To get an Uber for six people with the baby was going to cost me $80 to go one way. 
So it wasn't accessible. We could have, we could have really jumped in the car. That probably would have been the way to do it. I just don't think, you know, I know we were going out for lunch right after the expo and that just wasn't. So the expo was one thing. The other thing, the finish line just, and, and really this is not necessarily a problem. A lot of races have this. The finish line is just unaccessible to, uh, to spectators. It's impossible to get to. One guy told me, I asked him where the finish line was and he's like, you can't get there. You can't get, I'm like, well, I just want to spectate in front of the finish line. Nope. Can't get there. So I don't know if there was a way to get there. I'm sure, I feel like I remember running up that hill and there were people all over the place. So I'm sure there is a way to get there. It just, what from where I was at that point, it wasn't accessible. Uh, and it was frustrating because we wanted to see Stephanie cross that finish line so badly. And you know, I know in New York City Marathon, it's the same way. They have uh, bleachers and stuff and you have to have access to that area. But uh, it, it was frustrating not to be able to see Stephanie finish. We did catch up with her right after. So we're sitting there, we're kind of wa- watching all these people come in and we're seeing like people really struggling walking and uh you know breathing and and hurting their legs are just killing them as they're trudging through trying to get out out of the uh out of the the finish area there one guy had a uh, uh he's wearing a white shirt he's just got these two bloody streaks you know we're going to talk about this guys uh, i was going to end the podcast here but we're gonna, let's talk about this really quickly really quickly we're going to talk about this there there are ways guys uh, to avoid nip, nipple chafing. There are ways. Um, I am a certified nipple chafing expert. <laughs> I learned the high, hard way. I've lost shirts on this, guys. I have, you know, I, I maybe I'm not, the people who I'm not talking, if you are blessed with DNA uh, that gives you impermeable, tough-skinned nipples, you do not need to listen to this next part. Uh, in fact, we all hate you. But some of us, you know, we're sensitive in that area and you run 26 miles and you run for five hours and especially it gets worse in the rain um, and they're going to burn and they're going to bleed and it's not comfortable. And the worst, I think the worst part about it is it's not like an injury like, um, it's not like you, you have a calf pull or a hamstring pull or a stretch, you know, a bad stress fracture, something that you can say, oh. Yeah, I, you know, I had to bail from my race at mile 20 because I broke my leg or because I got sick and threw up or because I passed out. Um, You can't say I had to bail at mile 20 because my nipples were bleeding. Unacceptable. And you know, it's unacceptable. You just got to endure the pain. And man, some of the guys that I saw, one guy in particular was so bad. I had to say something to him. Um, But there are ways, guys, there are ways to avoid this. And I tell you what I learned Here's what I learned. First time I learned, all right, I got to cover these bad boys. Like it needs to be covered. So all I did was I took some regular Band-Aids and I put it over top. And it worked. For a while, it worked. And then a couple weeks later, I was doing a 15-mile run and it started raining on me. And I looked down. As as I'm running, people are running the other way. And I knew that they were were burning, but I wasn't really looking at, at them. Uh, and as I was running this way, people that were running this way were like staring at my chest. <laughs> I know how you feel now, ladies. Um, <laughs> they were staring at my chest and I looked down and sure enough, I got these two bloody spots and it, and it's not pretty. I, I wound up losing a shirt that day, uh, because of one of my favorite shirts because of it. And what had happened was even though I had the band-aids on, they adhere to the hair on your chest. If you're a hairy chested man, um, and they just slid off. They just slid off in the rain. As they got wet, they just slid off, exposing the nipple to the chafing. Now, I've heard people say that they use body glide. <clears throat> and maybe that works. I don't trust it. It's not enough. There's not enough there for me to be like, feel comfortable enough that that little sort of gel or whatever that stuff is, is really going to protect your nipples. <laughs> There's no other like word for that, right? That's the word. You got to use it. Uh, So the key is you got to take a razor blade and just shave either side, little rectangles where the adhesive is going to go on either side of the nipple. Then you take, you don't get those regular band-aids. Those are terrible. And don't get those little circle ones either. I I was, I forgot my band-aids once for New York City Marathon and a guy was like, here, it just takes two of these. And he gave me these little circle ones that you had to have like these really tiny nipples in order for them to fit over. I know, I know this is sounding funny and you're probably laughing at me, but 
look, you just got to deal with the word because there's no other word for it. Uh, don't use the little circle ones. Those are ridiculous. You get yourself those cloth band-aids, the one that will stay on for like three weeks if you let it. The one where if you pull off, you get that whole entire outline of dirt that's built up over the last couple of days because you haven't taken the band-aid off and that it sticks there and, and your your skin is still sticky for a couple of days after and your shirt sticks to it. And, you know, you know it's just, you got to get those cloth band-aids. Those things will last forever. Any rain, any so shave the area, cloth band-aids. If you want to double down and get some like Aquaphor or Body Glide just to put on the spot or put on the actual uh, the bandage part of the band-aid, not the adhesive part, but the little bandage part, that's fine. I, I used to do that, but I found it wasn't really necessary once the, once the area was covered. Once it's covered, it's covered, and you're golden. You're good to go, and you make sure those things are on there. Put them on the night before so you don't forget the morning of. That's one of the reasons I forgot the morning of. It's not that gross. It's not that dirty to wear them for two days, whatever. Um, you know, and yeah, they might hurt when when they when you pull them off. That might suck, especially if you didn't shave the area well enough. Uh, but that pain is nothing compared to the bloody nipple chafing pain. Stay That you want to avoid at all costs. And that's just my little tip from me to you. Uh, take it for what it's worth. And, uh, so back to Marine Corps Marathon, you guys did awesome. (laughs) I am so looking forward to Atlantic City, the Atlantic City half in May, uh, the rock and roll half. I'm so looking forward to, um, what's the other one? The Philly Marathon next year. Uh, I I am going to sign up for the full. I hope I get some people to run it with me. Someone told me that the half is on Saturday and the full is on Sunday, which is a little bit, uh, that's going to upset me to go out and watch the half and not be able to celebrate with the people that ran the half uh, because I'm running the full the next day and have to go to bed early while you guys stay up late. But uh, I'm going to run the full next year. So I hope I have some people to run it with me and uh, and we'll party together on on Sunday night if that's the case. Um, Don't miss out, guys. And if you're listening, you know, anyone can join Team Ordinary. That's the beauty of it. Just go on up to teamordinary.com, check it out, click that click the button, join us, get the, get the gear packet, you get the shirt, you get the hat. Um, you become part of the team, meet us out at these races. This was so much fun. This was so much fun. Um, I can't wait to do it again, guys. And I know, I already know that we're going to have a bunch of other, a bunch of new people joining us as well. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, next podcast will be Friday, unless we can get Stephanie down here to, to do an interview. And remember, Every day is an ordinary day unless you make it extraordinary. So get after it, guys. You guys made it extraordinary on Sunday. I tell you that. Tough as nails, man. I, I, You know what? I give it to you. Congratulations. Everyone who finished that race. Amazing job. Amazing job.